Now, speaking between the traditions, the goddess sitting behind me is Guhya Kali. She's also called Kala Sankarshini. She's also called Nairatme Yogini. And in Nepal, in the Guhya Kali temple, Buddhist Vajracharya priests go and worship her in the form of Nairatma Yogini as a Buddhist Vajrayana deity. And Hindu priests wholeheartedly allow to continue this worship, not considered subversion or anything. And it's not some modern days fantasy of some interreligious faith worship going on, you know, okay, because most of us start imagining that way. It is before these religions were even divided, just like two children divide their property and they say, this is my house, my land, this is my house, my land. Mother says, both houses are mine. So this is the case with the Vajrayana and Tantric Hinduism. Because the goddess is the mother and people might say this is the Hindu world, this is the Buddhist world, but the goddess predates these identities. And if you think of the Jainas, and they also have Padmavati, Kalpa, and many other cultures, the primary is Padmavati in the form of Mahalakshmi. Integration of Mahalakshmi within the Jaina pantheon. And one more thing that Mahasaraswat, the goddess in Nepal, we also have a Nila Saraswati form. And in many people who, are, who have studied Tantra do know that after the sadhana, of Ugratara, you are led to do the sadhana of Nila Saraswati. So various Tara forms are integral to Saraswati, Maha Saraswati, and that culminates in the Tantric practices with the Nila Saraswati. So yet again, in her Saraswati form, we find the integration of all Taras, and as you know, Buddhist Tantric practices have so much of centrality, primacy on Tara with their practices. 